All right, so we are here for another epic tutorial. We are going to design some memorial stoles. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hop straight into Affinity so we can get started. Uh, let's do that. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here we go. Um, this is our stole template. You can find this template. Again, we have the 60 inch and the 72 inch that is available in our Epic stash. So if you are part of our group, Epic Pressed, Incredible Pressed Images Crafting, excuse me. Uh, we do have a stash of free designs, templates and backgrounds that you can go and download from. So you can go and get this stole from there uh, for free. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change the color just so let me sure you guys again. Just so I can see it a little better when I start working on it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a rectangle. So right now we are designing on the 72 inch template. So my width is six inches and the height is 38 inches for each side of the stole. So for me, I like to put in a guide so that way I know where to keep all of my information that I don't want to get cut off. So my safe area on my stoles for the 72 inches is about four inches wide. So I'm gonna put this four inch rectangle here. I'm gonna change the opacity. So I'm gonna bring it down to about 50. So that way I can kind of see through it, but still be able to design. So I'm gonna line that up in the center here. I'm gonna duplicate it. The shortcut is control J or you can right click over here in your layers panel and hit duplicate. And I'm gonna slide this one right here. All right. So, so that when I start designing, I don't keep moving these and they don't fall on top of my layers or below my layers. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the lock. So I'm gonna lock both of these. So now when I try to move them or take them somewhere else, it will not let me click on them to adjust them. So even if I grab them in the layers panel, you see it gives it the X's around the edges instead of the normal dots that you would have. That's how you know it's locked in place. So now you can design on top of it, below it, however you want, and it's not going to move, okay? So let's go with, uh, let's go with a red color so it kind of stands out a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start with our base. We're gonna go to grab a background. Like I mentioned before, a lot of these images came off of Google. So I can see them. Um, so I do have some of them saved here on a, another sheet just because I didn't want to have to waste a lot of time going to search for them. So this design right here, when I was searching, all I did was go to Google and I typed in Stairway to Heaven. And a lot of different backgrounds came up. So once you find a background that you like, you will go ahead and copy that. And then we're just gonna paste it over here in our template, okay? So we can stretch this to kind of cover how we want. Now, because we have a left and a right side, you know you're gonna need two copies because we have to drop it into both sides. So I'm gonna do right click, duplicate. Again, the shortcut is control J. If you're on a Mac, it would be command J. I'm gonna drop this one in the left side and I'm gonna drag and drop this one into the right side. So now I have my background set up. So if I if these are in your way, you can go ahead and turn them off just so you can see it a little better. All right. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is I like to kind of go in and add my pictures. So depending on how many pictures you have will depend on your setup uh, with your pictures, your extra elements, any fonts that you wanna add. So, I am going to go over here to stock and let me see if I can just type in. Let me grab this really quick. So I had typed in gold gates because that was one of the elements I wanted to use earlier. So let me copy that and go put it over here. All right, we'll leave that there for now. And now I'm just going to type in a man, a boy. I just want to die. So those boxes are where you put the design inside. So I've dropped the background inside of the stole 
but the red boxes are like my safety area. So if I add any text, I don't want the text to go beyond this red box because remember this sole template already has the bleed built in. So if I go all the way from edge to edge, the words outside of this red area will get cut off. So I put this here, when I start dropping in my pictures, you'll see that I want to have all my important stuff to fall within this area. Now, if it bleeds off a little bit, like let's say for instance, the shoulders or whatever it is, that's fine. But if I have any text, like if I put date of birth, date of death, I want to make sure it stays within that safe area so it does not get cut off. All right, so I'm just trying to find some random pictures. All right, let's shrink this down. And let's go ahead and take this to remove BG. So all I did was copy it. And I'm gonna paste it in. As you can see, like my gold frame that I'm gonna use later, all of these, I just found them on Google, remove the backgrounds. And then you can save those to your assets. So let's download this picture. Probably not the best memorial picture, but it's gonna work for what we need. All right, so just a quick little tip. Like for me, this picture is kind of dark and you can see where the shadows are from the camera. So I am going to go to, um, let me see, I'm in Affinity 2. So I'm gonna go to Layers and then I wanna go to New Adjustment and then I wanna go to Curves. So the shortcut is Control M. This is a quick and easy way to kind of um, adjust photos that are either too dark or too light. This is probably the extent, I don't do too much uh, photo restoration, but if I do notice that my pictures are too dark, I'll grab here drag in the middle and drag up, or if it's too light, I'll drag down to make sure that the images are kind of similar in lighting. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna drag this. Okay, so like I said before, his face, if his face was showing, would be the important part that I wanna make sure I don't cut his face off. So making sure that his head fits inside that red area is what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna go drop this one into the left side. So we clip it in there. And then if I wanna make it a little larger, I can, but making sure that I center it up so that way his head falls in the red. Some of his shoulders will get cut off, but that's not too bad. All right, let me see if I can find another. We'll grab this one. shrink it down. Let's see, I can't find it somewhere on my screen. So I'm gonna go to my alignment tool, go to center on the page and there it is, it'll bring it up to me. Right click, cut. I'm gonna go back to remove BG and then I'm gonna do control V to paste. Okay, so you still have all of this here. I know some of you that like to work and remove BG, you're like, how do I get rid of all this other stuff? If you go to edit and then you go to erase and restore, you have the option to erase something or bring it back. They did bring in this new magic erase. So if you kind of go over the area, the computer with AI will kind of recognize what parts you might want to get rid of. If you know there's a part that you want to just erase automatically, you can just turn off the auto detect. So I'm gonna leave the auto detect on and see if we can grab this. I don't even want her actually. And let's see how clean they can get it. Boom, pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that one. Now I can bring that one in. I didn't drag it in. There it is. All right. So um, here, the shoulders kind of 
cut off, but that's fine because I know I'm going to line it up to where it's going to be cut off in the bleed area anyways. So when I go into my layers, I'm going to drop this in the left side, but I want it to go below the, the first picture. So there we have that. And then we can kind of slide this down. And then if I turn off, I can kind of see where it's going so far, okay? But again, I made sure that his face was within that red area. And if you go slightly out, like just by a little bit, it won't be too big of a deal, but I try to stay within that area. So that way I don't have a hard time trying to line it up so perfect. On the 72 inches, I can go four inches all the way to the top. When I get to the 60 inches, at least if you purchase the soles from me, they are tapered at the top. So I try to go like three and a half inches towards the top of the sole because those do have the taper at the top, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Slide him there. Um, let's say for instance, we have another picture. And you can't get rid of the background or um, a lot of the times I'll get a picture of someone that is cut off. So like, for instance, let's say his body is cut off here. And if you try to fade it out, it's going to fade out part of their face or whatever it is. So that's when I like to use a frame. So I'm going to come back over here, grab my frame, control C. Let's just turn this off really quick while I get the frame ready. Control V. So now I have my frame here. So I'm gonna bring my frame down to size. Um, I do wanna put it at a little bit of an angle just because that's just a personal preference. And then I'm gonna shrink it down to where most of the frame falls within the red area. Even though these little parts are cut off, I don't mind because for me, I don't mind it going to the edge because it gives it that full bleed look. If you don't want it to be cut off, you can shrink it down to fit within the full area of the uh, red box. So I'm gonna undo that. I like mine a little bit oversized. All right. So now with this picture, I can drop the picture behind it. Let me turn it back on, kind of size it up so that way it fits inside. Okay. But the only thing is I grabbed a transparent one. So it's an open background. So if I try to drop it inside of here, it's not going to work. So what you need to do is grab your rectangle tool, draw yourself a rectangle. Let's make it solid so we can see it. So let me bring up the opacity. And then when I clicked on this, if you look over here in the transform, the angle is negative 13. 0.9. So I'm just going to do negative 14 for my frame just to make it an even number. So I'm going to grab this rectangle and I'm going to do negative 14 because it's going to make it the same angle. And I'm just trying to cover that open spot. I don't want to cover the whole frame, just the open area. Okay. And now I'm going to drop this below the frame. So I can drag it over here in the layers, pa layers panel and bring it below or you can come up here to your toolbar and you can just move back one and it goes back one. Now I can drag and drop this picture into the red rectangle. Now it looks like it's inside of my frame. So now if I wanna resize it, let me grab the picture. I can kind of resize it to fit more. Okay. So there we go. Now, what I would do with these two, with that rectangle and the frame is I would group them together so they always move together. So you have them both selected. You're gonna hit right click and group or the shortcut is control or command G. So now I have this frame. Okay. So the next thing we wanna do is maybe add a little bit of text. So I'm gonna grab my text tool and his name is going to be Marcus. 
on the mouse. There we go. So let's go ahead and pull that. Let's rotate it one so I could rotate it here with the handle. So I'm trying to get it to 90 and it's like going just missing. Or I can come down here and just do 90 degrees. If it doesn't go the right direction, I can do minus 90 so it'll go the other way. Um, the third way you can do it is you can just rotate it here using rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. So three ways to rotate it. Let's pick a different font. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that. We're gonna line it up in the center of that. Again, I'm not going outside of the red area. Uh, let's go with a different color just so it stands out more. Oops, there we go. So we'll go with this burgundy color. And then I'm gonna grab and duplicate it. Oops, right click over here duplicate and then let's type in long live because a lot of people like to use that one let's go back to our script font uh, let me grab one from up here mm -hmm. I'm not even making this for anyone, but I'm still just like being conscious of the font that I'm selecting. All right, let's grab that one. Let's flip the color so that way it kind of stands out. So you can either put it in the middle of the name or you can bring it up here like to the top. Um, if you want, we can rotate it back. And again, making sure that it stays inside of that four inch box. So we can go right there. I'm gonna go all the way to my four inches. Now I go four inches, my stole is about five inches. So I have about a half an inch on each side, but that's why I only do four to keep it nice and safe. Uh, so the safe area measurements is four inches on the 72 inches. And for mine on my 60 inches, since they are tapered at the top, I do about three and a half at the top. All right, so we have that there. Let's just say, for instance, we want to go grab our frame. And we don't want it to be a gold frame. We want it to match this color here. So I'm going to change the color of it if you want to. But for me, the gold frame was just fine. But if you wanted to switch the color of it, you could, okay, Let's go back and we'll just leave that frame that color. All right, so let me turn off, oops, I unlocked them, I didn't mean to unlock. Let me turn off these layers so I can kind of see what I have going here. All right, I'm going to turn the frame back to gold, there we go. Now I'm going to come back over. I have some clouds. I have some doves. So let me copy my doves. I know Jocelyn was like, please don't use doves. I think when they're strategically placed, they aren't that bad. If you don't do too many, you don't make them too big. Just to kind of fill in some dead space. But really, it doesn't take much. Like once you get a background, let's duplicate that. Let's flip it. Let's shrink it down so we have different sizes. So kind of put that one there, but let's move it below the words. So that way it looks like it's below the long lip. All right. There's that. And let's put one more on this side. Let's flip it. Shrink it down a little. And there you go. Like I said, the only thing we added were the pictures, the frame, but the background pretty much came with everything that we needed. And we got that all off of Google.
okay? So that's one way to do it with the background there. Like again, this picture is probably not the best. So let's say they only give us two decent pictures. We have this one here. I can duplicate this one. Let me turn my safe area back on. And let me grab the one that's behind. Let's enlarge it. Yes, I know it is going to be cut off quite a bit, but I don't mind because we already have the main picture there. And then I can do one of two things. I can add color to the picture. Let me change the opacity. Let me turn off my safety area. So now we have that. I can make it a black and white picture, even though that kind of looks similar. I can bring down some of the opacity in the picture to kind of make it look like it's like faded out. So there are a couple things that you can do to add if they only give you a couple pictures and you want to fill space. So I liked it with the color background. And then of course I would have to move this dub out of his face. Oops. Let's grab both of these pictures. Let's move them up. Okay, still stand. So this dub we don't need anymore. And now I can add in a rectangle. And let's change the color of that rectangle to match. So grab my color picker. Let's match the rectangle. So I'm just gonna make it a little longer. Drop this into the left side. Let's add a stroke. And then again, I'm gonna turn my guide back on, my safety area back on. Let's add some text and let's go. Sunrise. Um, let's go January. First, 1990, sunset, December 30th, 2023. We'll do 22, I'll we'll be predicting nobody future. Let's go ahead and center that text up if we want to. Uh, let's see. I have to learn how to do that color picking thing and add the shape because that seems much easier than Photoshop. Yeah. So the color picker, all you do is just drag over. Once you get the color you want, then you actually have to click on the dot to fill it. With Photoshop, they automatically just fill it for you. Once you select over it. Oops. Let's do that back. So that's really the only difference with uh, from doing it in Photoshop to doing it here. So we have the, the sunrise, the sunset. So any text, again, I don't want my text to go outside of the four inch area, but I can pull it to the max if I want to. Um, if I wanted to change my font, let's see, what's this one? I can change it. So let's say we'll grab those and change it to match this. That way, just the sunrise and the sunset is in cursive. All right, but then again, I have to resize because I changed the font. So now the sizing is different. And you're like, okay, but I want my sunrise and the sunset to be larger. So now I come over here to my font size and I can increase just those words. Instead of having to separate them out and type them separately, so 96, 144 is too much. So let's do like 120. 120, not 1220. Okay. And then this one I can select and do a matching 120. Let's 
we can add some space in between those and then kind of center it up, grab my move tool, put it back in the middle. Now, let me zoom back out. Control zero is to zoom back out to full screen. And then I can turn off that guide area. And there you go. Oh, let's see. In Photoshop, I normally type in my color code. Is there any way to do that? Yes. So let's say, for instance, um, you want this to be black. So I put this in the front. And affinity two is right here. So I can just go all zeros. And that's going to turn it into black. Um, if you are in affinity one, I don't think in one they have the little color code here, but if you double click on the color wheel or the if you double click on the full circle for the fill and the open circle for the stroke, you double click, you have your color code right here. So you can change it that way too. So in Affinity 1, I think you have to double click here to get it to open. But in Affinity 2, they've added the uh, hex code right there for you. So I'm gonna go back to Burgundy. Um, the only other thing I would do is probably add just a few little effects to make the text not so plain. So I would come down here to my effects. Let's move this over. Let's go ahead and do a bevel. Let's do an outer. And then I can kind of increase. You see how it's kind of giving it like a little shadow, just giving it that 3D kind of lifted up off of the, the edge. And I'm going to do the same for this one. I try to stay consistent with the different styles that I pick. So if you look here, when we zoom in, as I'm moving the slider, it's applying more or less. Um, you can play with the direction if you want. If you want it to move to a different direction, you can do that as well, just by moving this little wheel here. Gives you kind of a different effect. Um, I can also apply, if I want the frame to kind of stand off just a little bit. So I want the direction to go this way. Again, grab this rectangle. I want to create some separation between those so I can do an outer shadow for that one. And then I'm just going to click here for the offset tool and I'm just going to drag it to where I want it to be so I can have that shadow there. And then if you want to decrease the opacity, you can do that. Or you can always just use your slider and then move the angle here. So if it's too much, you can bring it in a little. If you want it facing down, you can do that as well. All right, so there is one that we can create. Uh, let me duplicate this, Control J. Now I'm gonna go, oh, let me see, there's questions. Show me the drag thing again to put the color. What do you mean, the, what drag thing? Like here, let me see, I don't know. So when I click on this rectangle, what drag thing, Kita? The color picker. Okay, so so I have the rectangle here selected. Let's just say I want it to be this green or this gold color. I'm just gonna grab the color picker, drag over, and you see the little dot next to the color picker is changing colors based on what you hover over. So let's say I want it to be that color, I let it go. My rectangle is still selected. You can see the fill color there. I just click on the dot and it fills it in. If I want the stroke to be that color, I bring the stroke to the front, fill it with that color.
So let me grab this colors, make sure they actually match and fill that. Did that help? Is that what you're talking about? Perfect. Okay, and then she said, once you're finished, can you show how to do the picture again? I do believe the frame is already a PNG. So the frame, I got the frame off of Google and I took it to remove BG because it did have um, a background on it. So let me pull in a new one, copy. So let's say we're gonna do a second frame. Oh, where is it? There it is. So here is my frame. So before you move it or slant it or anything, um, it is currently an image. So I can't drop anything inside of it. Now, if I have a picture that can be a rectangle and it'll fit, I can just drop it right behind the frame. It'll be fine. But I like to just grab my own rectangle, draw it to fit within this shape. I don't want to go outside of it, but I do want to cover the whole opening. And then I want to drop it down one layer. So that way it looks like it's a part of the frame. Now I can grab my image. Resize it. Let me center it up so I can find it. There we go. So now I can drop my image into the rectangle. And then if I need to resize to fit, then I can put it in there. And then again, I'm gonna grab the frame and the rectangle, and I'm going to group them together so that way they always stay together. If I need to go in and change out the picture, I can always go into the rectangle area and swap out the picture. All right, so we can get rid of this one because we don't need it or we can leave it and just, so this one was minus 14. So this one, I'm gonna do a 14, just so it's going the opposite direction. Let's see, the height is 10.3. So I'm gonna make it even, just so they are about the same. Actually, no, that one is not. It looks way bigger. So I'm going to move it there. And then I would drop this below that frame there. And then if I needed to, I can move the name. And then again, if I want to in Affinity 2, since I already have the effect on this frame, I can just drag the effect over here onto that one and then drop it on that frame. So let me grab both of these, drop them into the right side. Oops. And there you go. Any other questions? And I'm probably going to do like a series because like this is just one design. So I may do another one. I know a lot of people like the rose design. So let me see if I can find that one. Oh, I use that one on Hayden's. Oh, here's one. So same thing here. If I just close this one off because this. But if I just turn off all of this, basically, I can take it back to the studs. So this one here, we have our blue cloud, our blue, our clouds with our roses here. And then at the bottom, I just did the gold clouds, same way, just flipped it and turned the color to gold. So this one is blue. Actually, this one is the gold one you can see from there. So if I just want to change it to red and then I click on the blue clouds and I want to change those to gold. Okay, I threw in a couple of doves. I threw in the rectangle. Um, I typically throw in the rectangle like if I want to add some type of text, but the background is too busy. I don't want the text to get lost. So that's what the band usually helps prevent. And then I threw in the picture. As you can see, it's the same picture 
or it's a similar picture, but in this one, I added the gold color to it. So this one I would have to change to match that gold or the red color. Or if I just take out the color, she'll just be regular. So either one. Any videos on memorial benches? Um, it would be exactly the same, except you would design within the memorial bench uh, template, which I think is in the stash as well. The only thing with those is you make sure you design and that they have to be, one is upside down. So the, the making sure that you put your words correctly on the bench part is important because the bench does sit uh, facing towards you, if that makes sense. All right, but this one, this is all this is, is a rose background. So let me pull it out so you can see what the background looks like. It's just roses with clouds in front. So if you can't find the roses with the clouds already, just grab roses and then you can put your own clouds separately. So like I have over here, I have a bunch of clouds that I can use individually. I actually prefer to have the clouds individual because then you can place them where you want. Um, but that one that I found or that one that I had, uh, where did it go? It already had it there and it actually worked out perfect. So just like that, you could change the color. Um, another one that I did want to, this here candle. So let's copy this and let's just say, we're gonna grab this. And again, I wouldn't add all of these elements to one design because it can get pretty busy but we can just like move this up drop my candle into the left side here um i did put a transparent so when it originally came in it was just a square background with the candle in it so i'm going to drop that into the left side grab my transparency tool and kind of just fade this out. So it doesn't have that harsh edge, but because I have it there, I can just move it down one below the rectangle and then I don't even have to worry about it. So I can have that like this. Let's move it up. Ooh, there we go trying to get a center. And then if I want to add color to it, I can just add whatever color I need it to be. Okay. So candles, that's another good option um, to add to a background as well. Again, like I said, I wouldn't add all of that to this one because it's just looking way too busy, but that is another option. And because you're clipping it inside, like the words that were over here, we don't even care about it because you're not even gonna see them. So I wanted to move this back up one. And then bring my transparency down. To kind of fade it out. Grab this picture. You can see his shirt kind of showing through below it. Um, I can just crop it out because he's behind that and there you go and giving it that transparency kind of um gives it that glow as well like kind of accentuates that glow but any other questions let's bring him down a little bit too high So again, like I said, I like to use the frames, especially when I get pictures, you always get those selfie pictures or pictures that are just cut off and you can't really fade them because it's gonna cut off the face as well. So throwing it in a frame, not having to worry about removing the background just works out. So, and all I did was search gold frame, silver frame, whatever color frame you want, black frame on Google, remove the background add in your rectangle and then drop your picture inside.
All right, so if there are no other questions, we are going to go ahead and end this live. Again, finding those backgrounds, um, stairway to heaven, clouds backgrounds, type in memorial background, sunset background is a good one to use, um, beach backgrounds, because you get that water at the bottom and the sky at the back, at the top. Um, and then just kind of going from there. Even if you just do like a gradient with throwing in some of the clouds and some of the other elements, you can make a nice memorial stole as well. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. It'll be just under one hour. Uh, the replay will be available if you're catching this on YouTube. Make sure you go follow our Facebook group, Incredible Pressed Images Crafting, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Have an epic day.